Hi, I'm Nadia, and welcome to another episode of House Proud. Today we feature Mr. Wayne Nasrallah, another gentleman collector who specializes in collectibles and antique restoration. We'll show a number of his pieces that he's collected over the years, as well as his restoration process. So don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back. With me is Mr. Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Hi. How are you? Okay. Welcome to House Proud. So you're a collector and you have a zillion and one pieces in your house. How did you get started? Um, I started going to antique fairs when I was really young and just picking up a few pieces and it just went on from there. When you say pieces, from, from what? What to what? Oh, I started collecting knives, then it went on to bottles and then stamps and coins and it just continued and continued. But know. why that fascination? I don't know, I just always like... Old pieces. So you're famous for restoration in particular. Um, and I know later on in the show you're going to show us exactly how the hands-on with that. Other than collecting though, what else do you do for a living? Um, I actually manufacture furniture, um, new furniture, and I also restore antiques and other pieces of furniture. Um, I make furniture from scratch or if you see something in a magazine and you want it building, I will build it. What's one of the oldest pieces that you have collected thus far? Um, one of the oldest pieces is a sword. It's from about 1640s. Mm. Yeah. And I have coins which are a little bit older, from like 1400s. How do you know what, what pieces come from which century? Where do you get that information from? A lot of the information I get off the internet, or I have books which I'll research it. Um, we, we, if I can't tell what something is, we'll send it away. And when I get the information back, mm -hmm. I actually log it. Well, I'm really excited to see the other pieces that I haven't seen mm -hmm. so far. And I'm sure you guys out there are waiting patiently. So let's head on inside. Okay, then. Wonderful. Oh, so where do we begin? Wayne, well, okay, this, this particular piece here, mm -hmm. is that considered an antique? No, this is not an antique. This is a, a reproduction of an antique. It's a one-arm sofa. It's made of mahogany and probably about 20 years old. 20 years yeah. old. Oh, one of my favorites. I just have to sit in this. <laughs> I love a rocking chair. I mean, you don't see rocking chairs with such detail anymore. Yeah. This one is from about 1910 and this is King George on it. Mm. Um, and it's carved and it's made of birch. This piece you were telling me earlier is uh, or was a, a cupboard? Yeah, it was a wardrobe and we took off the sides and we put on a top and made it into a coffee table. With these drawers. So where do you get these from? These little yeah, we buy these in Jamaica. They're oh. ceramic. Yeah. Oh and look at your brass collection. These are a collection of old bells. Yeah, all of oh, them. Oh, they're all bells? Everyone is a bell, yeah. They make music. Yeah, they're they all make. dinner bells. So back in the day when they summoned for eating, mm -hmm. dinner time, they were just little. Yeah. Oh. And they're all made of brass. Yeah. Is this a piece of antique here too? Yeah, that's a piece, about 1840s. It's mahogany as well, that's Jamaican. And what would they have used a piece like this for, to display? items like this? Yeah, this would be a side table or a small tea table where they'd serve tea on. Wayne, tell me a bit about this piece now that you use to, to this display. This is what they call an old kitchen wagon. This would normally be in the kitchen and the pots and pans would be under there and also placed on here would be the kitchen utensil. quite a number of, I mean, little nicks and knacks here. One in particular, these bottles, and I know just throughout you have quite yeah. a collection of bottles. Is there any piece that you have that you can tell us a bit of history about? 
Okay, I have one here, but it's a broken one. It's an old Jamaican bottle. It's actually Edwin Charlie, mm. Jamaica, Spanish, Spanish town. town. Um, normally, it would have a top that would have a marble in it, and when the pressure goes in, the marble seals it. But because it has a marble in, children find them, break them off to get the marble out. If not, it would have been a quite a rare bottle. So tell me, how much would a bottle like this cost now, with the marble and everything intact? With, with this writing on it, we've not found any that is intact, mm. up to a thousand US. A thousand US. Mm -hmm. You hear that, folks out there? Don't be throwing away Edwin Charlie bottles, you know. My pay your rent. <laughs> And then we have our little teapots. You have a nice collection inside too of, of teapots. Soup spoon? A soup this ladle? Is, this is a wine ladle. A wine ladle. So this is from 1740s. <laughs> and how we can tell that, it has the coin in here. It's a silver coin dated 1740. So you can know how old it mm -hmm. is. It's sterling silver with an ebony handle. Cute. Oh, look at this. What was this? Water, coffee? That's for coffee. That's actually Russian. A Russian piece? Yeah. In what? Sterling silver? No, it's actually silver plated. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's move on over now. I think this is your silver collection? Yeah, this is silver. Some is sterling, some is plated. Um, there's different pieces here. These are silver plated. These are sterling silver. So I mean, what would we, what would one use these little? Those were actually for? used for salt. They would put salt in it with a little spoon. Right. And it would be in that glass um, sleeve. And this what would be for it? Same thing. Same thing, salt. Yeah. Cute. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Should I take this in my car to protect mm -hmm. myself? What is this piece? This now? is an old Gurkha knife which was used by the Gurkha regiment who fought in England, in India. Um, what about the piece that is housing all This that? is a mahogany piece, um, they call it a dumb waiter. And it, um, three shells, it's made of mahogany and it's about 1830s. 1830s. Well, there's still more for us to see inside, and wait till you guys see what's inside. Believe me, <laughs> a lot to see. Follow me. Wayne, you're really a collector. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to begin. You take the first piece. Um, okay, uh, this. What was this used for? This, it's, it's a crumb tray. Normally, if they had crumbs on the tray, on a table, they would normally scoop them up into this. That's dummy. Yeah. That particular piece over there is nice. This one? Yeah. yeah. This, is an old, this is an old English piece. It's called copper luster. It's ceramic, but it's made to look like a copper. Copper? Yeah. It's like from 1900s. Is this real crystal? Yeah. A wine. Right, yeah, decanter. decanter. Oh, and look at the little spoons you were telling us about. Yeah, those are salt spoons. For the spoon. salt spoons. Yeah. And this uses salt. Right, right. What was this piece? This is an old wall lamp. Um, this would go on here, and then a candle would go in here. Right. It's on a spring, and as it burns, it keeps coming up. Um, this would have had what would happen? What would have happened to the wax? The wax actually goes down and collects into this container here, which goes through these holes and then goes down there. And obviously it went on the wall. Yeah, it went on the wall like this. And it would have had a glass yeah. shade around it. This is quite pretty. Yeah. This is an old Chinese vase, probably around about 1890s. Um, you can tell it's old, because you see the crazy. The crazy yeah. So, small. so that's how you identify something old, but yeah. nowadays they're doing techniques like yes, this. Yes, you can. But if you run your hand along it, you can feel it's actually smooth. smooth. 
The other one you'll feel. Rough, rough. Gotcha. 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 What about this piece? Okay, this is a center. Unusual. Yeah, it's a center piece for a dining table. We'll go in the middle of dining tables and then put a flower. Flowers like a vase inside. or yeah. something on top with flowers. Mm -hmm. Your, your, your beer hold up? Yeah, this is how the bottles would come. Some of them never came at bottoms, mm -hmm. and that was the holder for them. And then you put in like that. And this is what, silver? Yeah, too? that's silver. I like this. This is like a little jewelry box. Yeah, it's a jewelry box. It's made of mother of pearl in little pieces. I love elephants. Yeah, this is a money box. They'd normally put the money in there and it would flip up into there and go down into the hole. Okay, cute. This, is this uh, uh, for wine or water? This is for water. It's actually made out of camel skin and they would put the water inside there mm -hmm. and it would keep cool from the leather. Well, these eggs, I know pretty much nowadays, especially everyone is collecting, you know, what are they, marble? Yeah, marble these are marble eggs, egg, marble quartz. Mm -hmm. um, and they collect them all different sizes, shapes, colors. This has a different texture to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. The sound in the troops? Yes. Or to announce to your wife that you're coming home. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> that's what it would have been used for, for the troops. And it's made of horn. I'll give you the honors. I want to hear oh, it. I don't think I can blow it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, we have a little brass set yeah, here. Those are Indian brass. Handmade. When you told me that one of the first pieces you ever collected was a knife. Yeah. Is it in any of the collection yeah. here? This one. This is a First World War German knife. What the officers would use. They would use mm. it to eat with. Mm -hmm. When they're finished, just put back in and put back into the uniform. Yeah. Wonderful. And look at this piece, heavy. Yep, yeah, this is quite an old one. It's from 1640. It's English mm. and it was used by the infantry. Oh God. <laughs> This particular piece, Wayne, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like it, I think, above all the rest because you know I love the elephants. So the legs yeah. are created with the elephant's trunk and ears. And But tell me, what are all these different, the pattern in it? What are these different pieces? The birds are made of something? That... Okay, the birds are made of mother of pearl. Mm. Yeah, some of them are missing here. Mm -hmm. These are actually ivory, mm -hmm. which is also inlaid going the whole way around. These are Indian. Well, I mean, we could be here all day going through all the little, little fine pieces, but guess what? I really want to get into the restoration process. So when we come back, you're going to see Wayne and I getting all dirty, fixing up one particular piece of antique. So stay tuned. Wayne, so is this the piece that we're going to restore? Yeah, this is the piece we're going to restore. It's an old day bed. Hi, and welcome back. Wayne is here to show us the hands-on of how to go about restoring a piece of antique. What is this, first of all? It's an old day bed. Um, somebody's brought it in to be restored. Um, we've actually put it together already. It was in pieces. Pieces when you got it? Yeah. Whoa. Um, How old is this day bed, you think? This is about 1840s. 1840s piece. Yeah. It's made of mahogany. Well, I'm really excited. I, I, I can't wait to get down and dirty. Mm -hmm. So, let's go at it. What do you want me to do? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll start off by washing it down. Yeah, we'll wash it down with thinners. And then I will let you have a go at sanding it with some steel wool. Okay. Okay. Cool. We've done 
done pretty much uh, uh, the steel wool part yeah. of it, right? What, what comes up next? Okay, what comes up next, we would take um, some thinners and wipe it down to take off any grease or stain that's on there. Okay. Okay. And this is regular paint thinner that you're going to use? Yeah, this is re a regular paint thinners. Which, same again, up and down the grain. What happens if you go against the grain? Um, you tend to scratch it, um, not so much with the thinners, but if you go along the grain, you get out all the wax and anything that's actually in the grain. So we've applied our thinner. We've, and we've uh, yeah, applied our thinner. Um, where we have the damage that we restored, mm -hmm. We're actually going to sand it down a bit to make it smooth. Smooth. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let, let me show you here. You would same again. You'd go up and down with the grain. What we do now is apply a light stain. You just added that to the to the thinner. To the thinners, yeah, mm -hmm. because the stain actually is too dark. Right. That I dilute it a bit. Yeah. This is a lighter stain, which, where the damages are not, we actually put it into the white of the grooves. Mm -hmm. Now this would be prepared for a sealer to go over it, which we would put on the same process, mix it with the thinners, and actually put it on by hand. Okay. So you don't have to wait for anything to dry, but then again, thinner evaporates. No, the next, so the next process you would, the sealer, you would wait for it to okay. dry. Um, what you would do before you put on the sealer, What is that? This is a stain which is a little darker. If you notice like here. Yes. Okay, that's now prepared to put the seal on. What is the seal on made out of? Do you know? It's a cellulose, um, which is really waterproof. Mm -hmm. um, in old days, we would use a French polish. Yeah, but this is actually, it's a more modern way of finishing. Mm -hmm. um, we still do the French polishing. Um, it's a little bit, takes a little bit longer. But this is more waterproof. It actually protects the furniture a little bit better. Okay. Okay, now what we do, we call this a, a polishing ball. Yeah. And we'll put the sealer on. And then same again, up and down into the groove. And then you repeat this process two more times, mm -hmm. and then you do a final, which is a lacquer, which is a little bit different. If you find an area that still has a little rough edge, this can still be steel wool down. Okay. And then, and you, then you can you go over with the sealer again, right. and then the final thing, same same thing with the the lacquer. Okay. So we we understand we need to wait put on two more coats yeah. and then the lacquer on yeah. top of that. All right.
while we still wait for you to, to continue doing this piece, I'm sure our viewers want to know how to cure Chi Chi. We use an insecticide, um, which we either can be sprayed on, injected, um, and sometimes fully emerge. If it's, um, if it's really bad, you need to soak it completely. Um, because you can treat an area by spraying, but you're not getting straight, straight right. into the wood. So, I mean, if you have a piece like a, like a, a, like a chair. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I, I could show you on this. If you look around here, there's a hole here where we would actually inject into the hole. So you know it goes all the way. And we also can spray, mm -hmm. yeah? Which is the same liquid which you would spray the whole thing. And you would leave it for about 15 minutes and then dry it off. Just amazing. This is the piece before restoration. And just to give you an example on the post opposite, what it looks like upon completion. Wayne, just give us a little bit of a summary what we have done so far to get the day bed looking like this. Okay, first we'll re restore it, make sure it's strong, fix all the dents um, to how the customer would want it. Then we would actually treat it for termites, if there was any termites. Then we would steel wool the whole thing down and wash it off with the thinners. When it's completely washed off and free from grease, then we would put on a sealer in three coats and then do the same with a lacquer, three coats, which is hand polished. And then we put in a beeswax, rubbing beeswax. And then we put on an orange oil or a lemon oil and this is how it will look. that's it. Um, ideally, how long does a piece like this take for you to restore? Something like this would take a day. Yeah, um, restoration would take a day and then the refinishing would take a day, so two days. Why is it so important for us to keep our furniture intact, looking good and preserving it? Well, we're not going to get these again. The, um, a lot of these stuff have been thrown on the houses. Wood or furniture pieces, whether it be out of wrought iron or you purchase it in a furniture store, can it one day become an antique like this? Oh yes, in a hundred years time it will be an antique. Give me some tips. Give us, give, give our audience some tips. As okay, to... with mahogany furniture, antique piece, once a month we use a, a, a wax or a, a lemon oil or orange oil, which is better. You rub it into the grain like once a month. Just once a month? Yeah. Apart from that, a damp rag mm -hmm. and you just dust it down and then once a month you do it. Too much wax will build up and it will, you lose the grain. Is there any particular cloth that we should be using to dust our furniture? The normal chamois, the, the, the yellow one or an old t-shirt. The, the cotton, cotton, anything one. cotton, yeah. yeah. Wayne, thank you okay. for bringing me into your home and showing me this process from furniture pieces, antiques to restoration. I've learned so much and I hope you guys did too. Very educational program today. Well, it's that time again and I have to say goodbye. But until we meet again, may God bless your home. Ciao for now. You know what this is? This is an old iron that was used back in the day and they would put coals in there to heat it up. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nadia. Join me in my next episode of House Proud when we feature Mr. Wayne Nasrallah, 
collector himself as well as expert on restoration. See you then, you might learn a thing or two.